Hello, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And today we're going to be taking a look at Monogram's Eager Beaver two and a half ton truck. This is part of their selected subjects program in which they re release older models. Now, there's been some slight upgrades to the box. It says here H10, uh, 135th scale, and it's a skill level two. It is what we would call a heritage boxing, which means that basically the original artwork is uh, is featured. And I happen to like that because if you're new to the hobby, you're going to look at this kit and you're going to tell, okay, this, is, this isn't the absolute state-of-the-art tooling or anything like that. Now I'll just show you around the outside of the box. Now this panel here is new in that uh, it features, you know, Ravel monograms where they give you the uh, the statistics of the kit. It's uh, eight, and a half in eight and a half inches long, 73 parts. It's finished in, or it's molded in olive drab, and it has water slide decals. And we have a potted history right here. And then in a larger size, they have it in uh, French as well. Looking at the side of the box here, the edge, they just show a side view. And then on this side, they've got uh, features of the model. It's got a removable top. Actually, there's quite a few uh, movable, imposable things in this kit. Now, I'm not sure if these ones will eventually be re-released. And then they've got a little paint guide over here on the side. So we'll open up the kit and I'll show you what's inside. Right, now as I open this up, I will admit that there's a little bit of nostalgia with this review. In that, uh, this was probably one of the first military kits I built when I was like maybe about 10 or 11 years old. And I have some warm memories of putting it together. It went together really well. And, um, of course, being 11 years old, I think I put it together within about an hour and a half. So let's look at the contents here. Everything is bagged up. And I'll show you these sprues close up a little bit later. This huge bag here has the tarp. Now I know a molded tarp, you know, some people consider to be kind of lame. But if this is going to be your first military model that you put together, or if, once again, if it's, uh, you know, a modeler who's only like 11 or 12 years old, I'm sure they'll be quite happy with this. And then we have... An acetate, not sure how well the camera will pick that up. That's for doing the windshield in the back window. We have a small decal sheet. And that certainly looks well printed. And then we have the instructions. Now, unlike the PT-109 that had basically the original instructions from when it was originally made, this one has Ravel Monogram's updated instructions. So they've got a little potted history there. And we have paint callouts here. Although I would really rather they just put the paint callouts right on the instruction sheet. And of course we have a parts list over here. One of the first things they have you do is using this template cut out the windows. And of course we have the suspension being put together. And the suspension is molded separately, which is nice. So even though this kit may not be the most accurate and the most up to date, it certainly, um, it certainly was not terrible for the day. And as you can see, there's no engine molded in. So this would be considered to be a curb slider. And this does have separate tires molded in black vinyl, which unlike the um, car builders, uh, military modelers usually prefer to not have them molded in black rubber or vinyl. And then we have a painting guide, and then it also has a painting guide for the six figures that the kit comes with. Now, these guys are all molded in one piece, and I'll show you those in a bit, but Really, if you're just getting in started in military modeling, you'll probably like these figures. Their only problem is they're not very poseable. 
Now, starting with the contents of the of the large sprue bag, we have a bag containing the wheels, and they do have nice tread detail on them. Um, they're fairly stiff, though. One thing, if I look carefully, you can see just up here that the molds were not 100% lined up, so there's a little bit of a step. So in order to address that, you're going to have to... Uh, you're going to have to sand that down to correct that. But other wheel, otherwise, the wheels aren't too bad. On this large sprue here, we have the drive shaft. Um, we have the sides of the bed. Um, there's a little bit of warpage on the sides of the bed. I don't think that's too serious. We have the, we have the fenders. And, of course, we have... The canvas cover, sometimes known as the tilt. And I was expecting to find the date in here, but I haven't found it yet. Moving on to this next sprue. We have the interior. That's a little better. We have the top of the hood. We have the, the bench seats. The back of the cab. And this appears to be a solid cab, although... Um, in the box art, it looks like it's supposed to be a canvas one. And here is your your chassis with the underside of the engine. The detailing is not brilliant. There's not a huge amount of detail on here. But like I said, if this is going to be your first um, uh, military modeling subject, I don't think you're really going to be too disappointed with it. Looks like uh, the, the disc brakes, the backer plates for the wheels... And you have three sprues of those. And then moving into the last parts bag. This one has four of your figures on it. And like I said earlier, they're all molded in one piece. So they're not going to be super terribly realistic. But, um, you know, one of the drawbacks with molding them this way is sometimes you might want to change the position of an arm or something like that, and that'll be kind of hard. Here it's the rear suspension and the 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 face of the truck, the grill and the headlights and that sort of thing. Um, and here are some wheels, and of course you've got your three axles. Okay, here we have our final part sprue. As you can see, there's a few more wheels on here. Steering wheel. Uh, this looks like the hitch. Um, your windshield. And these are your doors. Now, if you look, you can see there's these fairly heavy uh, hinge pins on here. And that's one of the movable features of this kit is you can open and close the doors. Um, so they're probably a little bit oversized. But if you wanted to, you could easily shave those off and... Replace them with something scale. And these, I believe, are your mud flaps. And two more of the figures. Oddly enough, they don't have a driving figure, which is a little strange. So, now, as for, you know, the, the accuracy of um, the details, the, uh, the deuce and a half, this, this type, went through several different uh, production cycles. And by, I believe, more than one company. So there were detailed differences between the grill work and the, basically, the hood. If we look on this one here, this is plain. But I know a lot of them had louvers inset in them. So the detailing isn't amazing, but... What is there is done fairly decently, and I did find let's see if we can see this in the light. We do have the bit here that should tell us when this was done. However, it looks like they um, engraved new information there. So it just says um, copyright Monogram Models Incorporated. The original date is gone, which is too bad. But I'm thinking probably this dates back to the 60s. 
So there you'd have it. I do like this kit. Um, I will admit I'm a little bit nostalgic for it, but I know it didn't give me any problems putting it together when I was 10 or 11 years old. So certainly for anyone starting in the hobby, they, uh, they won't have any problems with this kit. Um, for anyone who's more experienced, um, it's a good basic start if you want to super detail uh, a deuce and a half. And, uh, you know, the amount of details you want to add to it, you know, is really up to you. Um, the basic outline and shapes are pretty good. And uh, I have to say, I, I like this kit. So uh, thanks for watching Dan's Model Works today. Bye.